So hello, thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Eduardo, and this is my co-founder Shu Yun, and we are Sea Drone, and we are making professional subsea robots to automate underwater inspections. But before we talk about robots, let's talk about fish production. There we go. So humans have been fishing our oceans for thousands of years, but due to modern fishing techniques and high demand. We have depleted 85% of our global fish stocks, and this is why fish farms like this one are essential. 50% of the fish that we consume today is farm-raised, but maintaining and inspecting a farm is extremely challenging. At 60%, structural failures are the single biggest cause of fish escapes, and inspecting these farms is very challenging. As you see, they're primarily submerged. And there are two things that need to be inspected. There's, there's a mooring line that holds these nets to the seabed, and there's the nets themselves that often require daily inspection. So aquaculture is projected to be a $200 billion market by 2020, and there will be millions of cages that need daily inspection. However, farm man managers currently only have one option, which is commercially trained divers. Now, divers can be very expensive, costing thousands of dollars a day, and for safety, they always must dive in pairs, so double that cost. And absolutely the worst part of all this is when the, far, uh, the diver comes out of the water, he has to fill notes on paper. Now, this can be imprecise, and often critical information of the actual structures is missing. So there is a huge opportunity to make fish farming both safer and more efficient. And that's why we are introducing Sea Drone. So we are taking lessons learned from aerial drones to make an underwater robot that is smarter, it's intuitive to use, easier to maintain, and cost a fraction of existing solutions. Here are a few specs. OK. So Sea Drone weighs only five kilograms. And, and it packs a lot of power. We have designed well, its thrusters to be replaceable. It has a gimbal camera like in an aerial drone that stabilizes the image. And one of the coolest parts about Sea Drone is that we we're designed Sea Drone to be circular, and we're vectoring its thrusters so it can hold its ground in very strong ocean currents. And not to talk about how an operator would use Sea Drone, here's my co founder, Shu Yun. Hi, I'm Shu Yun. Today I'm the fish farm operator. So let me show you how Sea Drone can help my work. First of all, let's say we already drop the Sea Drone into the water, and we turn on the Sea Drone app. Uh, could switch to another camera. Okay. So now I already ready to drive the Sea Drone. I can move the Sea Drone forward, backward, even do some sideways motion. The cool thing is, it's not just a regular control interface. I can immediately see what kind of the inspection task I need to do today. Let's see, I need to do the oh, anchor one inspection, anchor two, three, net one, and net two. Let's start with the anchor one. And we go back to navigation. Let's pilot the sea drone and take some photo. And then the photo will automatically store to the right place. And then I can just finish this checklist. And then I'm ready to upload all the inspection data to our cloud-based service. On the farm manager side, he can immediately see the global information of the entire fish farm. He can even see all the detail for each cages, including the previous inspection data, current inspection data, and even just file a report with one clip. Since the C drone provides the better data, the farm manager can actually make a much better decision. So let's see how we pilot the C drone in the real fish farm now. Can you switch back to the slide? Thank you.
Okay, so we're going to skip the, the video and we can show uh, those that come to our booth. But uh, aquaculture is really only the beginning. So we've been getting a lot of requests for underwater boat inspections. And there's other needs um, like in oil and gas. So there's a lot of distributors that already exist in this market and they're excited to take a smarter robot on like C-Drone. So there's also a very old and existing opportunities like dam inspections and bridges. So today we're very excited to be introducing our C-Drone product line. We have the Explorer, which is primarily a robot that you teleoperate using this portable device. We have the inspector that includes the inspection process that Xu Yun introduced. And we also have the developer for researchers and nerds like us out there that just want to hack something and have the API. So with that, we want to thank you very much for taking the time. And we would love to talk to you at our booth. Thank you. All right, judges, any questions? OK. Do you have to have an, op do you, do you have to have an operator in the loop? And for how long do you think that'll be the case? Um, yes, that's a very good question. So right now, uh, there are certain tasks uh, that you don't. So the reason actually we're focusing on aquaculture is because there's a very promising task that doesn't need to be, uh, there needs to be an operator. So in that case, you actually throw the robot into the net, and it does a spiral pattern up the net, and it collects the video, creates a map like you do with an aerial drone. So that's a task that uh, divers are going down every day to do. So that's why we're starting there. So in terms of the, um, the components there, are, what's proprietary in there? Can someone yeah. just rip it apart after you like release it and just re reverse engineer what's in there? Uh, I mean, I think that's definitely a potential. I mean, we do have an uh, uh, international patent uh, filed in, uh, with Wilson, Centini, and Palo Alto. However, um, yes, somebody could do that. But what our, I think our key point is that we want to stay always ahead, right? So we want to build a very strong technical team that is always innovating. And we have a very uh, exciting technology road path. What's the patent for? Uh, it's on the uh, design. So we're uh, both roboticists. So we found a kind of a general framework of how you can quickly design a robot and adapt it to multi multiple tasks and payloads. And uh, that's one of the things that uh, prevents a lot of these companies from designing and, and, and releasing new robots quicker. Yeah, we actually design our own simulation environment. So we actually use that to can help us to debug our controller. We can even just know that what's the potential failure point of the robot before we even build a robot. Yeah. So that's kind of like our bread and butter. That's the precise camera motions. I, I, I'm a little bit familiar with aquaculture. Uh, I've been to several fish farms, uh, salmon in particular. And I don't recall any of them sending divers down to check the nets. Uh, and I'm wondering whether you're talking about something that's a very specific kind of fish farm. Uh, are you saying, are you sure that it's standard procedure to oh. send someone down every oh. day to check the nets? Absolutely. I mean, divers are, are being used. Norway is the one that's more ahead of the curve. So they do have these drop down cameras that they sometimes deploy. However, I mean, there's nothing, uh, they, they're only doing like point inspection. So it's very difficult for a, a drop camera to actually capture the entire uh, farm and actually, we the the, pe the people that are most excited about this technology is uh, is actually farm, uh, fish farms from Norway. Because yeah. I've I've seen them only in Maine. So my question, second part of this is when the ca when the robot goes down with the camera, is it recording information or just visual inspection? Does it record data or is it taking tests? Is it doing? Because one of the things obviously is that fish start getting sick. Yes. There's yes. nothing worse than being an investor in a uh -huh. fish farm where the fish get sick. <laughs> yeah. So uh, unfortunately, I've had that bad experience. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that is one of the uh, big problems. Uh, and actually, that's why uh, these uh, nets, one of the reasons they need to be inspected is because uh, you're, you're wanting to know what's the uh, pollution level in the water, right? So you can then go and clean them. But yeah, I mean, to answer that qu your previous question, the robot actually goes down collects video, and then right now we haven't implemented this yet, but we're going to use machine learning to detect potential rips. So now the, the uh, farm uh, operator doesn't have to go through many hours of video just to see you know, the, the highest risk. And it, that, this is very easy to do because the net is a very 
good pattern overall. Yes. So you are going to be able to bring up information of quality of the water, pollution that's taken place, yeah. plus so, any disease that's, that's yeah. occurred. So we're, we're, focused on, we're very focused on, on, the, on the net inspection first because the biggest cause of these uh, fish escapes is due to these uh, inspections, uh, sorry, the, the lack of inspection and the structural failures. And the other component is that there's regulatory governments that require you to submit reports that show that you have inspected these structures, right? And, and, and that you don't have any escapes. So there is actually even a potential to get these uh, governing regulations on our side to push for this technology. Can you, can you talk a little bit about the product design? Because yes. I was, you know, when you sort of unveiled it, I was surprised that it's sort of, it's got, I mean, it looks like a quadcopter. It's sort of more drone look like, um, I was expecting sort of more of a nautical sort of submarine-like thing. Yes. Um, talk about the product design and why yes. why it is that shape. Yes. Um, Definitely. Um, so as we so these longer uh, vehicles are mainly they're very efficient. So they're going long trajectories. However, they're not uh, very precise in you know following close uh, uh, patterns. So when you're looking at these cages, they're about 30 meters in diameter, 30 to 50 meters in diameter, and you actually want to be following it uh, very closely. And the most important part is that the camera is very stable. Now, you can't really do this with this, these type of vehicles because they have a rudder, and it, it's right. really difficult right. to... I get it. Vibration. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so what's on the rest of the table? What do you, what's underneath the rest? Is yeah, the cable? So there's actually, we have a router. That, this is a router that we're... Oh, okay. Uh, and the and the cable. Yes. Well, the so, cable there. So why, it, why is it tethered? Why um, talk yeah. about that? Yeah. So uh, the reason uh, we're actually the the one we were launching the, the vehicle that we launched yesterday. It's like the tethered version, and a tether is is because it's very difficult to transmit high bandwidth video back to the surface. So uh, you need to have the tether in order if you want real time video, and this is one of the like the key key uh, use cases is these uh, deep inspections where divers can't use. So our current betas are being used in these deeper waters uh, where you, they don't want to really send a diver. I mean like rigs or what? Sorry? Like rigs or rigs or uh, uh, No, right now they're being used to monitor these anchors at, at the deep, deeper depths of these fish arms, right? Um, so again, the reason for the tether is you, you want uh, high bandwidth video. Uh, so. Um, talk about total market size. Yeah. You know, what is the yes. price point, total market size, yeah, so that kind of good stuff? So there's multiple ways to go about it. So the, there is an existing market, as we described, that there, there's people, distributors in place to take this on. So there's a ROV and AUV market, and that's about a four, uh, well, it's projected to be 4.8 uh, billion by markets to market in uh, 2019. Now. The reason we're looking at aquaculture is because they're not really using robots in this space. They're using divers. So existing robots are actually, in, uh, they don't have the technology to do these uh, close uh, inspections, these re really precise video inspections. So there really is an opportunity to expand the market. Um, yes. So what about maintenance, replacement parts? And then the one thing that Alan asked that she never really addressed is, can you add sensors to detect pollutant levels and things like that that could cause the fish to get sick? Because you mentioned your patent was around quickly assembling modular robots, yes. correct? Yes, correct. Um, so the first question is maintenance. So the, that's actually the two things that have been that have driven the aerial drone market are uh, low cost uh, overall uh, hardware and also it's easy to operate and maintain. So when we looked at, you know, designing the robot, that was the essential part. Uh, so we made, for example, our thrusters are now replaceable. Current companies, you, you have an ROV technician and you hire an ROV pilot. So we're actually trying to innovate. So those uh, jobs don't uh, potentially exist. Uh, maybe that's a bad way to say it. But uh, So now you grab these components, you throw it away, and you replace them. And why we're able to do this is because we're able to lower the cost significantly in mass production. 
And the second question. Oh, adding sensors to oh, it yes. that, uh, that enable additional functionality. Yeah, right now, you're focusing on visual inspection, which I get. Regular pattern net and so on. Do you want yes. to take this? Question? Right now, they actually have the, they call it underwater sonar system. So you can use that to do the boat inspection, especially for those waterless nets that you cannot see anything there, especially for the, something like the harbor. Yeah, for yeah. those kind of conditions, uh, you cannot use a uh, visual sensor. You can use a sonar. But we design our robot to be very flexible. We can just plug into any kind of uh, sensor, and then the robot still can, can work in that environment. Yeah, so we're using a full Linux computer, and we can interchange the sensors. Now, the pro problem that uh, the gentleman uh, mentioned about uh, these uh, microbes or things that attach to the fish, now that's actually more based on the uh, ecosystem of that particular water. So that's actually one of the bigger challenges that they have, but it's really hard for us to, you know, to get there. Uh, to, to what, is it, what, do you, what do you intend to sell these for? I assume it's a sale. And what, if, what does it cost you or, you know, at the moment? Or well, um, so we're plan? selling them in the price room between uh, 2700 uh, and, and, and about 33 And it, we're actually mass producing uh, components, uh, small components in China, but we're doing all the assembly and larger components in Mexico. So I'm from Mexico, and uh, my father has been in uh, manufacturing for a long time. So we're really leveraging uh, th this uh, to to drop the, down the price. Um, so we have uh, already strong margins, um, and I don't know if I want to get into the details, but thank you. Any other questions? All right, one more round of applause for C-Drone. Thank you. <laughs>